Hello and welcome to the Advanced Software Architecture course. My name is Imad Hamouda. This is a lecture on architectural tactics, part three. In this lecture, we discuss architectural tactics for modifiability. Study after study shows that most of the cost of a typical software system occurs after the software has been initially released to respond to a certain change. Addressing a change is known as software maintenance. There are four known categories of software maintenance activities. Adaptive maintenance is to modify the system to cope with changes in the software environment, such as porting the system to a new platform. Perfective maintenance is to implement new or changed user requirements which concern functional enhancements to the software. Corrective maintenance is about diagnosing and fixing errors, possibly ones found by users. Finally, preventive maintenance is to increase software maintainability or reliability to prevent problems in the future. Modifiability is about change, and our interest in it centers on the cost and risk of making changes. Tactics addressing modifiability have as their goal to control the complexity of making changes, as well as the time and cost to make changes. The figure on the slide illustrates a concrete modifiability scenario. A developer wishes to make a change to a system feature, as requested by the product owner. The developer modifies the source code at design time. This is a typical example of perfective maintenance in agile development. The modifications should be made with no side effects within three hours. In order to make an architecture more modifiable, an architect is equipped with a rich set of modifiability tactics to select from and realize in the architectural design at hand. Four major categories of modifiability tactics can be identified. First, the architect may consider reducing the size of a module. The second category is to increase cohesion. Cohesion refers to the degree that elements of a module belong together. The higher the cohesion, the lower the probability that a given change will affect multiple modules. The third category is to reduce coupling. Coupling refers to the degree to which software modules are dependent upon each other. High coupling is an enemy of modifiability. We could measure the probability that a modification to one module will propagate to other modules. The fourth category is defer binding. Binding time of modification presents the preparedness of the system to decrease the cost of late life cycle modifications. In general, the later in the life cycle we can bind values, the better. Late binding contributes to system flexibility. As example tactic, split module typically reduces the cost of making a modification to the module that is being split as long as the split is chosen to reflect the type of change that is likely to be made. Please refer to the textbook if you want to learn more about the individual tactics. Here is an example system showing modifiability tactics in action. The system at hand is being ported to a new display environment. The developer wishes to change the user interface by modifying the code at design time. The system has been designed in such a way that the view components are implemented separate from other modules. This is a direct result of applying the split module tactic. In this case, it is highly probable that the modifications are made with no side effects and within a desired time frame.
Here is a question for reflection. What could be a disadvantage of split module and defer binding as tactics? Split modules may lead to over fragmentation of software units, which may compromise comprehension. Implementing defer binding might be complex and expensive. We want to bind as late as possible, as long as the mechanism that allows it is cost effective. This is the end of the Architectural Tactics Lecture Part 3. Thank you for watching.